uh, I want to thank Congressman Kani for, for opening a very serious conversation. Uh, this is not the final word on this issue. This is just the opening gambit. We cannot talk about policing without talking about the militarization of the police force. We cannot talk about these issues without talking about gun control. I didn't hear a single word about gun control. Uh, that is an important issue. But what's also most important is that I like the analogy that you drew <coughs> between community policing and without using the word, it, it comes down to either racial profiling when it's looking at crime in cities, or it becomes religious profiling when it becomes counterterrorism. So when we are talking about predictive policing, it is synonymous with, <laughs> to me, it sounds synonymous with profiling. So, but what is also interesting is that if profiling is contingent on electronic surveillance, then community policing is about human intelligence. And you cannot have, and by now you must have learned it, whether we are using drones in Pakistan or whether we are targeting people here. Human intelligence is absolutely critical in, in making sure we get the right targets so because every time we hit a wrong target, we radicalize the population and do more harm than good. And so it is it's very important that the community policing uh, brings in the rest of the community, which serves not only as, as those who can absorb the negative consequences of the targeting, but also become sources of human intelligence, and therefore it's very important. I hope that in the next few months uh, you will lead this, con this conversation and this open this debate. It's really very important. It's also very important that American Muslims do not sit by and stand by, because whatever is the outcome of that conversation, it is going to affect us directly. Uh, there is no doubt about it. It is going to shape both counterterrorism strategies and uh, policing strategies in this state. Uh, in the next two, three minutes, uh, Governor Markel is, is about to leave, so we're going to do two things. Uh, we, uh, we had a long conversation, a really long meeting with Senator Coons, and who really, really wanted to be uh, with us here, but he is also competing interests are there. He is right now in Paris with President Obama on the climate conference. But he did send us a video. He took the time out to make a recording, and we will play the video. But before that, and before Governor Markel uh, leaves, I want to invite uh, the two partners of mine who, who helped create the Delaware Council and made this entire conference today possible so that the governor can uh, meet with them, uh, Dr. Navid Bakar and Brother Jamil Turk. <clears throat> On behalf of the Delaware Council, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who came in, especially the governors, all the elected officials. It's very important to us to respond to one thing that the governor said, and that is, where do we go from here? This is not about just today not about us being in the paper or impressing anybody. It's about what do we do next. This Delaware Council is not going anywhere, and we call on everybody present and others to join us because the work will never stop. Senator Carper mentioned something that started 2,000 years ago, and we continue to abide by it. So the bottom line is, if we want to do something, we should get involved in any way we can. Again, thank you very much for everybody, and thank you for being here supporting us. And we would appreciate if you join us in this long road ahead. The panel is not going to end with this. We, we no. still have two more speakers, so just remain seated. And I want to invite Naveed Bakar here. I have to do a test whether he's a jinn or a human being. He works 22 hours a day. 25. 25? 25. 25. 25. Yeah. As we got closer and closer <laughs> to the conference, he never slept. We, we were having conversations from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., uh, working either on logistics or program. Naveed. Um, first of all, I, I would like to thank everybody who is here, and especially uh, our leadership here. Thank you very much, all of you who are, who are sitting here or who have been sitting here before you uh, and who will be sitting, sharing this stage after you today. Uh, this, is, this convention is a testament that 
we have a role, we have a responsibility as a community. And even if I just take it as, as a subset of the American, system, American society, you know, Muslim Americans, you know, we can do these things, but these things are not going to happen if we sit back home. You know, I wish, and Muqtada Khan had already said this, I wish that this hall was full and, you know, we had the top floor fill, filled up as well. You know, if we are not going to be involved, um, you know, things are not going to change. This convention is a testament that the leadership in Delaware, they are willing, they want to come in, they want to invest their time and efforts in helping the community to solve social, social justice issues. Uh, they want us to, to do and play our role, but you know, if we are going to sit down and watch a football game, you know, things are not going to change. Uh, so with that, once again, I uh, thank all of you, and I thank all of you too, uh, and I hope we can continue this momentum that we have built today uh, and, and continue to build upon it. Thank you. And here is the Senator Kuhn's uh, message. Focusing on some of the key issues that confront us prejudice and discrimination, poverty, and the need to build stronger relationships between law enforcement agencies and the communities they serve. 